imagine if this pipe was not, you know, three meters long, but probably around this, this long. And then we'll have this welded to that. And then it will go around here. And then in between there will be a flange and there will be some um, injector -y parts. And yeah, that's basically the engine. Hello Rocket friends and welcome back to the workshop. I'm standing here in front of our um, new test stand for the BPM25. And I want to talk a little bit about what we're going to be doing with this and some of the further developments we're going to do to run the test stand in. Um, one of the big things that we're going to make to run in this test stand, since it's completely new, and basically, a, I guess, a virgin, um, we're going to build an engine that will not explode. Because we've spent a hell of a lot of time developing our BPM25 engine, and it would be a massive shame for us to blow it up because we didn't know how to open our valves or close them properly. So, we're going to be introducing our new, new engine, which we're going to call the BPM-17. And the BPM-17 is going to be a pipe engine. And I don't know if you know, but before we tested out our BPM-5 engines for our Nexer class rockets, we had the BPM-2 engine, which was also a pipe engine to validate the test stand. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to build a pipe engine to validate the test stand that the test stand works. And so when we know that, then we can put on the BPM25 and run that. The really interesting thing about the uh, BPM17 is that it's going to be the same flow rates in fuel and oxidizer. Um, so you can already hear in the name how much more inefficient this <laughs> Uh, pipe engine is going to be just in the name. So let's talk about why the pipe engine is almost impossible to blow up. So the pipe engine, um, well, it's a pipe. It doesn't have this lovely rocket bell curve that our uh, BPM25 is going to have. And when you don't have this bell curve, then you aren't going to be able to put in fuel and oxidize and then have a pressure chamber and then have a pipe bomb uh, where if you have the pipe there's no constriction in the engine which means that if we should put too much fuel or too much it's probably the too much oxidizer that will explode it in the end but if we put too much oxidizer and we ignite it i guess the wrong way well it's just a pipe and it's just going to blow out the end of the pipe um, and it's also going to be a fairly thick walled pipe. The other thing is, it's going to be really easy for us to build uh, because we're not going to be cooling the, no the nozzle or the pipe, uh, which means that we don't have to do fancy internal structure to uh, cool the pipe down because like, we're not going to be heating the end up so much that it's going to be deformed, or if it does deform, it's a pipe. It's not really going to matter. And we're going to have six <laughs> meters of it anyway. So if it does deform in some way, we'll just put a new one on. And so that's really the big main thing about this engine is that it's easy to build because it's a lot simpler than the BPM25. We are not going to be running it through the, um, the nozzle, right? The fuel through the nozzle. And the injector is going to be simpler to make because it's smaller and the holes are massive compared to what we're going to be doing in the uh, BPM25 injector. It's a fantastic way of validating some of our tools, making the injector. Um, the ox dome, it's going to be fairly <laughs> stout, which you're going to be uh, seeing later or maybe sooner. We might be putting some of the pieces together today. If you want to see any of this hardware coming together in person, touch some flown rockets, or try our space capsules on for size, come visit us. We run public tours every weekend, so just check our website for availability and book your visit. We really hope to see more of you here. Let's talk about some time schedules. What are we hoping for? Me, personally, I am hoping that within three to four months, hopefully, maybe, that we're gonna be able to put the BPM 17, I've been so used to saying 25, 
putting the BPM-17 on this test stand, fueling it and firing it within three to four months. That is my hope. I hope that we can do it. Not sure. There's a lot of things that can go right. There's a lot of things that can go wrong. One of our main things at the moment is that we have no electronics made yet. They are 95% done design-wise because we're basically going to be um, taking almost all of the things that we learned from the Nexer class rocket and we're just going to reuse it because we know it works. So there's no reason for us to try something new out. Um, so that's going to be, hopefully we can speed run integration hell. Let's see if that's gonna happen or not, but that's, that's what I'm hoping by us doing this. But let's see. I always know that something is gonna catch us off guard, but hey, we're getting very, very close and I'm getting extremely excited for seeing fire and this amount of fire. Holy, <laughs> cannot wait. The reason we're getting so close to reaching space on our speaker rocket is because all of our crowdfunding supporters. If you enjoy watching these insider videos on building a space program and you would like to become an even bigger part of it, you can help us out by going over to our website www.copsum.com and becoming a supporter with a small monthly or one-time donation. We all do this for free in our spare time so you'd be surprised how much every little bit helps and thank you if you feel like what we do and share is interesting.